Magavan and folks. It's me, Kamal, once again, and I'm bringing you an integral forged in the fires of Mount Doom itself. We are evaluating the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the x, to the x to the x, to the x to the x, and so on and so forth. So it is an infinite power tower integral. And usually with such nested type structures, the approach is to introduce some kind of auxiliary variable and see if it simplifies, which it does. But it doesn't simplify as simply as most do, like in the previous nested square root tangent thing. This one is a lot more interesting. It's got a lot more kick to it. So we're just going to take x to the x, to the x to the x, to the x to the x, and so on and so forth, and set it equal to y. But that, of course, means that if we analyze the structure up here, this itself is supposed to be y. So that means we have x to the x to the y equal to y. And now I can introduce logarithms to say that I have y times log of x to the x equal to log y. And now I'm interested in solving this for y and getting a simpler structure, or at least a more tangible structure, than the infinite power tower. So how on earth are we to do that? Well, for starters, I could write y here as e to the log y, because that is valid. Of course, the logarithm and y are inverses of each other. So I have this other term of x, and I have log y on the right. And this implies that log of x to the x, which of course can be written out as x times log x, equals e to the negative log y times log y. And I'd like to also introduce a negative sign here and another one to balance things out. And the reason I want to do this is to introduce the Lambert W function. Now just a quick recap for the Lambert W function. If we define a function f of t as t times e to the t, then w of t is the inverse of that very function. Which gives us a couple of very interesting equations. We know that if we apply f to w of t, we're going to get t, and by the same token, if we apply the Lambert w function to f of t, again we get t. So if we expand the left-hand sides, then we see that f is defined in this manner. So expanding the left-hand side gives us w of t times e to the w of t equal to t. Similarly, we get w of t times e to the t equal to t. And we'll make use of both of these equations at one point or another within the solution development. But what form or what equation seems to be more applicable to the scenario we have up here. Well, we have negative x log x equal to e to the negative log y times negative log y. So it does look useful for us to apply the Lambert W function as given here. So we'll do exactly that. We have Lambert W of the left-hand side equal to Lambert W of the right-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we would get negative log y, whereas here we have lambda w of negative x log x, which implies that log y here is just negative of lambda w of negative x times log x. And if we exponentiate to recover back y, we get y here equal e to the negative lambda w of negative x log x. Okay, cool. but. What are we supposed to do with the exponential of a Lambert W function? Well, the answer to that lies in this equation over here. So we do know that Lambert W of something, in this case, negative x log x, times e to the Lambert W of, again, negative x times log x, equals the exact argument we have. That is negative x log x. And we're interested in the exponential term here. So let me expand using its multiplicative inverse so that we get e to the negative lambda w of negative x log x, 
equal to negative lambda w of negative x log x over x times log x. Okay, cool. And that, of course, is our y term, recall. And y was the auxiliary variable we introduced for the integrand. So far, so good. We have gotten rid of the infinite power tower, and this implies that i here is now the negative of the integral from 0 to 1 of lambda w of negative x log x over x times log x dx. And I know what you're thinking. This does not exactly do us all that good because we still have a relatively complicated integrand to evaluate. I mean... What on earth are you supposed to do given the Lambert W of x times log x or something? Well, we have evaluated a few Lambert W integrals here on the channel before, but the strategy invoked there is vastly different from the strategy we're going to use over here because back then we just used the definition of the Lambert W function, made some substitutions, moved things around, yada, yada, yada. But here we'll be a bit more, we'll, we'll adopt a bit more of an exotic strategy. So yeah, you know, typical math 505 type stuff. So the Lambert W function has a series expansion. Yep, we're going to use an infinite series. We have the sum over k from 1 to infinity. Uh, this is actually extremely cool. This is k to the k minus 2. And we also have a, oh wait, we have an ultimate term over here. It's negative 1 to the k times k to the k minus 2 times z to the k over, and wait, let me just check my notes. In fact, it's a negative 1 to the k minus 1 term. Then, of course, we do have the z to the k, and we're dividing this by gamma k. Wow, that is quite a bit of stuff. Anyway, so we have Lambert W of negative x log x terribly. Sorry about that. So that means we have the sum over k from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k minus 1 times k to the k minus 2. And you have this negative 1 times x, which means you have a negative 1 to the k term here, and then an x to the k times log to the k of x over gamma k, which is k plus 1 factorial, but we'll leave it in the gamma version form, which, which is extremely cool. Anyway, so wait a second. What exactly is negative 1 to the k times negative 1 to the k? That should be equal to negative 1 to the 2k minus 1, which is, of course, always equal to negative 1. So all of this means that we have negative of the sum over k from 1 to infinity of k to the k minus 2 times x to the k log to the k of x over gamma k as our series expansion for Lambert W of negative x times log x. And that's actually useful given the structure of our integral. Let me just zoom out to give you guys a better visual of things. So all of our hard work implies that the target integral, first off, we see a cancellation of negative signs, which is always welcome. So we have the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over x times log x times the sum over k from 1 to infinity of everything I've written above. And we do see that there is some cancellation going on for 1 over x times log x and all of the x log x terms up here. So we get the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum over k from 1 to infinity of k to the k minus 2 times x to the k minus 1 times log to the k minus 1 of x over gamma k dx. We'll now switch up the order of the integration and summation operators. So we have the sum over k. of I'll take all the k terms outside now. So we have k to the k minus 2 over gamma k times the integrals from 0 to 1 of x to the k minus 1 times log to the k minus 1 of x dx. Now, this integral over here actually has a really nice closed form that I will leave to you guys as an exercise. If you're given the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n times log to the n of x dx, then all it takes is a substitution of log x equal to negative u and then some gamma function magic. 
and then you arrive at negative 1 to the n times gamma n, gamma n plus 1, that is, terribly sorry about that, over n plus 1 to the n plus 1. And I forgot to put my phone on silent. There's the notification bell. Anyway, who cares? We're dealing with hard mathematics over here, which is... What is better than tough math? I don't know. That's not even a question, for God's sake. Anyway, so in our case, we have n equal to k minus 1. So the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the k minus 1 times log to the k minus 1 of x dx equals negative 1 to the k minus 1 times gamma k over k to the k, which actually looks very, very appetizing given the structure we have. So all of this implies that the target integral i is just the sum over k from 1 to infinity of k to the k minus 2 was up top, then we had a gamma k term downstairs, and now the integral evaluates out to all of this stuff, which is actually really cool because we have k to the k, and of course we have a k squared term. The gamma functions cancel out, so, to, so do these terms, which means we're left with the sum over k from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k minus 1 over k squared, which we recognize as the Dirichlet eta function evaluated at 2, which of course converges to pi squared over 12. And one subscriber recently commented that I used to like make pool linkages or pool links between like zeta 2 and anything remotely resembling zeta 2. I don't do that often anymore. And I think I think it was uh, I think it was upset about this. So I'm going to reference the result that pi square is actually equal to the gravitational field strength on Earth. And we have G over oh, I'm just kidding, guys. I mean this is one half of zeta two. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.